everybody. So we're out in the shop and guys, today we're gonna work on the chopper build. Now, the focus for today is going ahead and getting all of the little decarb and everything off this knife, get a nice finish on it and then put a maker's mark on it and then go ahead and either acid etch and stone wash it or do a mustard etch or something like that. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do. I want it to look really sleek. So that's why I was thinking acid etch and stone wash. We'll figure out what we're gonna do when we actually get to that point, but let's jump into this. Let's get this knocked out and see how it turns out. Let's do it. So right now we are using a 100 grit belt and all we're trying to do with this is just remove all of the decarb. Now, some people will go through and heat treat their knives before they do the bevels. That's actually a pretty good thing because you can absolutely get rid of all the decarb whenever you start doing the bevels after the heat treat but for the amount of stock that I had to remove for this knife I wanted to go ahead and do that before it was hardened but right now we've got to get that fine line between getting decarb off without making the knife too thin or changing the profile of the knife and all we're focusing on is just getting it to the point to where we have nice clean bevels and we've eaten through all the decarb. It's just making sure that you don't go so far that you end up messing up your crisp lines or anything like that. And at this point, we just want to put enough pressure on it to let the belt do its job, but we're not trying to hog away steel or anything like that. So it's just getting light passes going through and gradually working it down so that we eliminate the decarb and again we keep nice smooth bevels because right now if we put too much pressure to the spine or too much pressure towards the cutting edge we could absolutely throw off our bevels and then we'll be chasing that error all the way down to who knows when so just take your time and light pressure on situations like this especially if you're going to try and freehand it and not use a jig And I'll tell you, you're going to end up checking over and over and over and over again so that as soon as you get to a point like this right here, you can just stop and go to the other side and then go from there. Now we're going to go ahead and switch from that belt to a medium scotch Brite belt. And we're just going to lightly remove some of the sanding marks and even the bevels out. Now you got to be careful when doing this. Again, don't push too hard because if you do, you'll mess up your crisp lines. So all I'm doing right now is just making sure that I get those bevels nice and smoothed out without going up onto the ricasso or the top area where that 90 degree spine is. Now, I went ahead and accidentally <laughs> dipped the blade in the acid and started etching it and then remembered, oh, I gotta do a maker's mark first. So that's why you see the discoloration on the blade. I pulled it out, cleaned everything off, and then started my maker's mark. And of course I do those by hand on every single one. And I've had people ask about this. This is the setting that I use on this little charger whenever I'm doing my etch for my maker's mark. I've had people ask me what settings I use and there you go right there. And of course we take our positive connection and put that on the steel and then we use the negative with the q-tip. I don't exactly know why it has to work this way but that is the way it's got to work. You will not get any real action if you go the other direction on this. At least I haven't been able to but you might be able to. I don't know. This just what works for me. We're going to dip it in our salt and vinegar solution and then go ahead and apply it onto the steel and basically you're just going to slowly press it on there and hold it down for about a second, a second and a half uh, over and over again. So you're going to press it on, lift it up, press it on, lift it up, 
press it on, lift up, and repeat. As you can see right here, you can see where it's starting to foam up where the Q-tip is touching the steel. And that is how you know that the reaction is happening. And you're just gonna, like I said, hold it down, lift it up, and repeat. You only need to do this for about 15, 20 seconds. You don't have to take a long time doing this. It will etch really fast if you're just sitting there doing it just how I was talking about. You can see right here, there's our Maker's Mark. Of course, I don't have to do anything really past this because I'm going to go ahead and etch it. But I will tell you, you want to take any of the excess fingernail polish off because when you dip it in the acid right here, that fingernail polish will keep the blade from getting etched right there or um, eating away at it. So you'll end up with a weird little area. Now, whenever it comes out of the etch, at first I was thinking, I really don't know about this. I don't think I like this finish. And then I decided, no, let's see what happens. So we got our baking soda and we went ahead and neutralized the acid, covered the whole entire thing with it, and then went on to spray it with W40 because I wanted to see what it looked like when it was all set up and finished. And I really like the way it turned out. I like kind of the different little patterns that are on it and I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in the outro, but definitely excited about how this turned out. Alright, so let's go ahead and wrap up today's daily vlog with a little bit of this. I think this is turning out awesome, we got our maker's mark on there. I really love all the patterns that are in this from the etch. I figured to go ahead and leave all of that on there, not do a stone wash or anything like that because I really love how this is all looking with those nice crisp transitions. I think it just turned out absolutely awesome and I think that it having the patterns like that are going to look absolutely awesome whenever you pair it up to the handle scales that have all those patterns in it. I mean, I just think that this is going to turn out awesome. I think the overall package is going to be super cool, and I'm really interested in what y'all think. So go down in the comment section, tell me what you think. Uh, I'm, I'm absolutely in love with it. I think it's going to be a beautiful knife, and I think it's going to be just an absolute beast. But can't wait to see it done, although I'm going to have to wait to see it done because it'll be a couple of days before I actually put the handle skills on and do that part. But eh, you know how it goes work now guys thank y'all for coming by if y'all would give this video thumbs up share this video or one of my other videos but if you haven't yet bottom corner hit that subscribe button so you get notified of the stuff that we have that's coming up in the future guys thank y'all for coming by thank y'all for spending your time with me y'all have an amazing day y'all stay safe out there i'll catch y'all next time